Due to the recent release of the infamous Gypsy Rose Blanchard from prison, the topic of Munchausen syndrome by proxy has been a very popular and commonly discussed recent topic. But what does it mean exactly? Someone who has this disorder, which is also known as facetious disorder, attempts to gain attention by pretending that someone else has a sickness that they really don't have. Typically, the person with this behavioral condition is a caregiver, and the person that they pretend is sick is their dependent. This was the case for Gypsy Rose and her mother, Dee Dee Blanchard. And while while Gypsy Rose is probably known for being one of the most famous victims of this syndrome, her case is certainly not the first one, nor will it likely be the last. So let's take a closer look at Gypsy's case and others like it. These are some of the worst stories of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. When you look back, do you think there are ways that this could have been handled differently? Absolutely, absolutely. I look at things um, in hindsight and I realized that there were other options besides murder, but I was so sheltered that I couldn't I couldn't see them at the time. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Nobody could take a look at Gypsy Rose Blanchard as a child and not have had a sense of sympathy for her. She was often seen with a fuzzy hat on to cover up her shaved head. She had missing teeth, was usually sitting in a wheelchair, and often clutching a stuffed animal while wearing a big smile on her face. According to her mother, Dee Dee, Gypsy was one sick young girl. She had supposedly battled everything from asthma to leukemia, brain damage, and muscular dystrophy, and had to be on a lot of different medications. But as the world would later find out none of it was true. Gypsy and her boyfriend at the time would later come up with a plan to kill Dee Dee so that they could run away together. But after the murder was carried out by her boyfriend, they were both soon arrested and later convicted. While both Gypsy and her boyfriend received time behind bars, Gypsy's sentence was far less severe. She served eight years of a 10-year sentence and was released on December 28th of 2023. She has since come forward to share her story. Many people just can't understand why you didn't just get up and walk out of that wheelchair? You weren't sick. It's mental, it's emotional, it's physical. All these reasons combined together is what prevented me from just walking out of that situation. Give us a sense of the fear that you felt. I feared more than anything that if I ran away, that things would be worse for me at home. Whether or not Gypsy should be considered a killer is kind of a controversial subject. While some people believe that she is a murderer, she says that she doesn't consider herself to be one. Um, I don't, I don't associate myself as a murderer because if you think about it, yes, I had a part to play in it. I requested, I asked Nick for help. And how that all conversation started was, you know, he was saying that he would protect me from anyone. I said, anyone. He said, yes. I said, even my mother. He said, yes. And then the, the plan kind of formed from there. But he's the one that did the actual kill not me. Gypsy has had no choice but to sit and watch while others discuss the personal details of her life, at times even turning it into entertainment. The 2019 true crime series, The Act, which depicts Gypsy's story, is just one example of this. The series, starring Joey King and Patricia Arquette, brought a large amount of attention to the case and has become even more popular since Gypsy has gotten out of prison. While Gypsy says that there have definitely been inaccuracies in the media about her life, she is now back in control of telling her story. I'm out now. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm I have a voice now. Um the hardest thing was to watch everyone tell my story and you know get it wrong and speculate and everything but now i'm i'm it's free i have a, i have it's my turn now yeah. since she was released from prison gypsy has enjoyed spending time with her loved ones particularly her husband ryan anderson who she met through a pen pal program and married in july of 2022 their marriage ceremony took place at the prison with no guests present and the most they were able to do was hold hands but now that gypsy is out her and ryan are free to be a couple and are looking forward to expanding their family one day by having children they also hope to have a redo of their marriage ceremony, complete with all their loved ones. And as for all those years behind bars, Gypsy says she doesn't regret them at all, but that they actually made her who she is today. How did prison change you? Um, prison, prison actually was actually very um, helpful for me. Um, I, I always say that if I didn't 
go to prison, I don't think that I would have acclimated to the outside world as easily as I have now. In fact, she says that up until experiencing what actual freedom was like, her time in prison was actually the most freedom she had in all of her life. This was because she was no longer in the control over her mother and confined to a wheelchair that she didn't really need. For me, I have to focus on myself right now. I can't look in the past and worry about him or anything else going on. I have to prioritize myself in this moment. Blanca Montano. This horrific case took place in February of 2011 in Arizona, and it involves what some have called a horrible case of Munchausen syndrome by proxy, and others have called a desperate and evil need for attention. A 21-year-old mother named Blanca Montano came under suspicion after her son, who was just a baby, got diagnosed with an astounding amount of infections. Each one of them were rare. There seemed to be no way that this could ever be a mere coincidence. It all began when Blanca brought her baby, who has been referred to as Baby D, in order to protect her identity and another one of her children who was older into the hospital for treatment. She expressed concerns about bloody diarrhea and fever, which both of the kids had. The hospital ran some tests and diagnosed both of the children with E. coli, but the baby's condition had progressed a lot further and more quickly. The infant was in very serious condition and had various life-threatening infections, including rotavirus, salmonella, UTI, and staph infections. These are not the kind of infections that a young child would be picking up all at once. Something more had to be going on. The doctors could not put their finger on what was going on with Baby D and making him so sick, but they believed that Blanca had something to do with it. Because they were suspicious, they decided to install a camera in her hospital room to monitor any suspicious activities. They wanted to see if Blanca would do anything that would affect her baby's condition. What they ended up finding was astounding. They watched as Blanca tried to cover up the camera. This raised their suspicions about her involvement in her daughter's deteriorating health. The staff investigated further and discovered that Blanca Blanca had tried to tamper with the baby's IV. What kind of mother would try messing around with a medical device that has been put into place to try to keep her very sick baby alive? It was easy to see why hospital staff believed that Blanca had some very dark and disturbing intentions here. But to add further to their suspicions, they ended up banning Blanca from the hospital room to see if there would be any effect on the child's conditions. Sure enough, the baby's condition quickly began to dramatically improve. So hospital staff approached Blanca and asked her why she had tried to cover up the camera in the hospital room. The only reason she gave was that she had some privacy concerns and didn't want people watching her and her child. But this explanation wasn't enough for investigators or the hospital staff. Blanca was soon arrested and charged with child endangerment and attempted first-degree murder. She pleaded not guilty. Blanca's defense denied that the young mother had anything to do with Baby D's sickness and tried to blame her baby's worsening health condition on the hospital staff. They also said there was insufficient evidence to charge Blanca with anything. Trying to say that you're not guilty when you were literally caught on camera doing what you're accused of doing doesn't go well for most people, and it certainly didn't go well for Blanca. When the case was handed over to they jury, they found her guilty of abuse with death or serious injury likely. She was sentenced to 13 years behind bars. Throughout the trial, many people tried to come up with a clear motive for why Blanca did what she did. Why would a mother try to kill a child she claims to love? While some have said it could be a case of Munchausen syndrome by proxy, the defense says this was not the truth at all. Rather, they pointed out that Blanca had been desperate to try to get the attention of her baby daddy. She believed that this was the best way to do it. So not only did she nearly kill her baby, but she did it for her own sick personal gain. As horrific as this story is, Blanca was actually not the last mother to try to do something like this by tampering with their child's IV and hoping nobody would notice. In January of 2015, a West Virginia mother named Candida Flutie pleaded guilty to a similar crime involving her sick nine-year-old son. It was at Cincinnati Children's Hospital where prosecutors say Flutie injected feces into her son's IV to keep him sick. Prosecutors say the injection of feces caused the boy to spike a fever. Do you think nine years in prison is enough for someone like this? Or should she have gotten a more severe sentence? Let us know what you think in the comments. Jack Barron. Jack Barron is one of the first men to ever be diagnosed with Munchausen syndrome by proxy. He was diagnosed in 1997, and his case has been closely studied. This story begins in 1986, when he met his wife, Irene Paget, who had recently gone through a divorce. The pair hit it off and were married just two years later. They had two children, Jeremy and Ashley, but their home was far from happy. The family struggled with money issues that led Irene to start her own daycare business. But this still wasn't enough to bring peace within their family. Jack had become 
a very angry and controlling man who was irritated by seemingly small and simple things. Something as trivial as the children playing around in the yard with the garden hose would be enough to set him off. Things within the Baron household took a tragic turn in 1992 when Irene unexpectedly passed away. Jack called Irene's parents in a panic to inform them of her death, but he couldn't explain what had happened. At the time, it was believed that Irene had passed away from a heart condition that she had inherited, but the truth of what happened to her is far more dark and disturbing and wouldn't be revealed until years later. After Irene's death, Jack's behavior became more and more bizarre. He began writing love letters to the well-known singer, Winona Judd. Some people believed that this was just his own way of grieving his wife's very sudden death. But then, just a few months after Irene's death, tragedy struck the Baron family once more. This time, it was Jeremy who died suddenly. According to Jack, he found the boy lying dead in his room. This was strange, considering the child was young and hadn't had any known illnesses. So now the only surviving members of the family were Jack and his daughter, Ashley. You would think that after what happened to Irene and Jeremy, Jack would be extra protective of his daughter, especially if could also be affected by whatever hereditary condition had supposedly killed her mother and brother. But instead, Jack seemed to be the opposite. He failed to take the little girl to doctor's appointments that had been scheduled for her. Before long, people began to become suspicious that the dark cloud that seems to be hanging over the Baron family wasn't just a shocking tragedy, but something even darker. It wasn't until little Ashley, who was just four years old, turned up dead too, that it became clear that there was no way that this same thing could have happened again and been only a coincidence. Jack was arrested and charged with the murders of his wife and children. It was later determined that he had used a pillow to cut off his victim's air supply and take their lives. Jack was sentenced to three consecutive life sentences in prison with no parole. There has been a lot of discussion and some controversy about whether or not Jack was truly suffering from Munchausen syndrome by proxy or was just one twisted individual with a sick need for control over everyone around him. Martha Woods. The story of Martha Woods is one of the oldest cases of Munchausen syndrome by proxy, and because it took place further back, we don't know as many details about it as we do about more recent cases. What we do know is that Martha Woods, while suffering with this disorder, took the lives of seven different victims. This included the three of her own children, her nephew, her niece, her neighbor's child, and a son whom she adopted. The murders are believed to have taken place between 1946 and 1969. Martha was a loyal army wife who who had to follow her husband wherever he was transferred. Some wonder if the constant moving and having to be away from her husband caused stress that may have played a role in this disorder. But it is also known that Martha wasn't someone who was just struggling with a behavioral disorder. She was a talented liar who could come up with believable reasons for why child after child left in her care kept turning up dead. It was through her skillful lying and the way that she faked all of these tragedies that she managed to get the sympathy and attention that she craved so much. That that is, of course, until her lies eventually caught up to her and people realized what she was doing. Her victims had not died of some strange, unknown causes, but from murder at her hands. She was finally arrested and charged with each of the murders. Luckily, she ended up getting what was coming to her after being sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Thanks for watching. Which case gave you the chills? Comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.